I know you guys have a lot of questions and need answering right now. Yes, Bandai Namco have begun to send out closed beta keys, and yes, I am definitely going to elaborate on that and quite a bit more in this video. So go ahead and kind of think of this video as an all-encompassing everything you need to know about Blue Protocol. I mean, we are heading into closed beta during April, so I guess it's kind of best that you guys know what kind of game Blue Protocol is, right? Now, if you're looking to get a closed beta key, then we have a subreddit dedicated to Blue Protocol with thousands of active members, some of which actually got accepted into the beta test with extra keys to give away. Who knows, maybe you guys will be lucky enough to nab one for yourself. Do note though that there are a lot of scammers out there right now that are pretending to sell closed beta keys to people that are naive enough to send them money. And while I can't personally do anything to ensure your guys' safety, I just kind of want to let you all know that, you know, the likelihood of actually securing a closed beta key, especially when buying one from some random guy on a subreddit or anywhere else online really is very small. The link to the subreddit is going to be included in the description of the pinned comment below though. Don't worry, we don't bite. Let's start this off by talking about the closed beta, since right now you're all more interested in that than anything else. On March 30th, Bandai Namco announced that they had confirmed all players who have been chosen to receive closed beta keys. Supposedly, emails were sent out, or at the very least, would continue to be sent out over the course of a several day period. However, if you're waiting to see if you got into the closed beta, then if you log into the official Blue Protocol website, it will show you at the top right of the webpage whether you got accepted or not. If the text is in orange like mine is, then you applied but you weren't accepted. If the text is red, then you were accepted into this phase of the beta test. The closed beta test will take place on April 23rd and will last through until April 26th. The game will become available for pre-download on April 20th and after the closed beta period ends on the 26th, there will be another questionnaire for players to fill out. Over the last couple weeks, the Blue Protocol team have actually been slowly releasing class trailers, showcasing various skills and general gameplay for the Aegis Fighter, the Twin Striker, the Blast Archer, and finally the spellcaster. I feel like this was actually a very good idea and was actually kind of necessary as there has definitely not been any gameplay that has been revealed thus far since he closed alpha test. I mean unless you go ahead and count the dungeon footage that came out last month but that was from the live stream of the event. Now speaking of dungeons, instead of dungeons functioning like they do traditionally, all monsters being within a level or two of one another instead, Blue Protocol's dungeons are going to scale throughout, meaning that a dungeon might begin with monsters at level 10, but end with monsters at level 30. I am uncertain of how damage is going to scale both to and from monsters though, but I mean at the same time, this is a very interesting take. It's also unconfirmed whether raids are going to function in the same way or not. Raids will be 20 players in size, however according to the team, it's possible they will increase this up to 30 players if the community wants it badly enough. Other than dungeons and raids, players will be able to take missions, which act more or less like quests, with greater rewards and more difficult content. There will be PvP in game, but not in the form that you're used to. Instead of PvP being an acronym for player vs player, in Blue Protocol it stands for party vs party. PvP will pit players against waves of incoming monsters in an arena, which will be a means of competitive play, considering there is going to be a leaderboard added showing the top party's times. Although I do want to note though that I don't know personally if the rewards are going to be greater the higher you are ranked on the leaderboard or the faster you clear the content. While there isn't player versus player content currently in game, that doesn't mean that they won't eventually have it. They went on to state that this hasn't been planned yet, not that there won't be PvP. Unfortunately for some people, there is a single race available to players to create your avatar with human. I know that's a generic race, sure, but there will be a surplus of customization options both with which to create your character and in the form of accessories. They've shown on multiple occasions thus far that you can make adorable Neko girls using accessories with there being a grand total of seven different slots, one being specific to ears. They've not confirmed any additional races going into the future and considering what we see are generally human NPCs, it seems unlikely, but that doesn't mean that it isn't a possibility somewhere down the line. They have planned to implement additional social features into the game like a functional guild system is currently at the point in development
development that we are at, there is not one. Additionally, with regards to being in a guild, the team went on to state that they didn't want to make players feel as if they were obligated to have to join a guild to participate in content, or instead to gate content behind needing to party with other players. So yeah, while guilds and parties are technically preferred, the game is also designed with solo play in mind for those of us that either have no friends or instead just want to tackle the game alone. Crafting and gathering are also both present in game. I'm not sure how extensive the crafting system is. You could craft weapons during the alpha test and could harvest ore and various types of herbs. And while they don't have fishing yet, it is also a planned feature going into the future, along with player housing. Which actually, you know what? Honestly, anime MMOs don't typically feature housing. I'm not sure if that is due to the limitation on the engine or if instead the target audience just isn't really interested in it. I mean, I think that Soul Worker was probably the only anime MMO that I had ever seen that had player housing. And I mean, even that was really, really limiting. You had what was, I believe, a small, oh God, there's a spider up there. Okay, uh, sorry about that. There was a spider climbing up the wall over there. It uh, really creeped me out. I had to go quickly kill it. But back on topic, Soul Worker was the only game or only anime game that I remember having player housing. And again, that was in the form of kind of like an apartment building and it was very limiting. As I mentioned earlier, there are a total of four classes, the Aegis Fighter, the Blast Archer, the Spellcaster, and the Twin Striker. When the game was first announced, it was revealed that there would be four classes total and that they had no plans to release additional classes. However, as per their latest live streams, they've confirmed that they're already hard at work developing new classes. Whether those will be present when the game actually launches later this year remains to be seen, but at the very least, they're working on having them ready in some capacity somewhere down the line, regardless of how long they take to finish. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you guys here. I would realistically prefer a well-balanced class over multiple really rushed, copy-paste, crappily designed classes that ultimately end up being incredibly incredibly unbalanced or overpowered or just really boring. Classes are going to have their own unique skill trees allowing for players to customize their builds. You'll have skill points to spend on different skills which can be obtained in a variety of ways but this allows for a little more personality in what you play. At the end of the day though, classes will likely still have cookie cutter builds but you don't always have to play what everyone else does. Sometimes having fun isn't actually about min-maxing. Blue Protocol is going to be completely free to play, there will be no purchase necessary to play the game, there are going to be no paid DLCs or paid expansions. A cash shop will be present in game selling what they claim will be cosmetic items which remains to be seen as you should always be a little pessimistic of cash shop claims. There will also be an additional season pass which will act similarly to how it does in battle royale games and will offer small premium incentives that they promise will not give any player an advantage over others. Blue Protocol is a beautiful, incredibly high quality AAA Japanese MMORPG being developed by Bandai Namco. The game is built on Unreal Engine 4 and has a fast, dynamic combat system similar to Kurtzpal or Soul Worker. It utilizes a beautiful, south shaded graphical style and is perhaps one of the best looking anime MMOs I have ever seen. The game is scheduled for release this year in Japan, and while the game might end up being delayed by a few months due to the situation currently going on all around the world right now, Bandai Namco have not expressed any intention of delaying the game at all. Back in early February, Bandai Namco went ahead and posted a job opening for a localization director that will be in charge of localizing the game. At the time, we had no confirmations of a Western release. All we had to go off of was that the job hosting required you speak fluent English. I bet you guys can guess the kind of speculation that came off of that, right? After some people claimed that the game would never release outside of Japan, Bandai Namco proceeded to register the Blue Protocol trademark within both North America and Europe. This further went on to confirm the company's stance on releasing the game within these regions. In their final live stream, they finally finally went ahead and answered player concerns regarding a global release. Expanding globally is definitely in the works and they are in the process of hiring people to aid in that endeavor. Currently, they're focused on the upcoming Japanese closed beta, but the game is actually being developed with global expansion in mind. According to the dev team, they never had any intentions of keeping the game as a Japanese exclusive and were building it to accommodate both the East and the West. And while this closed beta is scheduled within Japan currently, I don't believe they have an IP block in place for the game nor its beta test. However, in the off chance that they do, or if they choose to release in Japan a year or more ahead of the rest of the world, I happen to know that Exit Lag, which is a VPN provider, actually fully supports Blue Protocol, meaning that
that you'll be able to play the game even if they chose to IP block it. And heck, since the Japanese servers will be located within Japan anyway, this will actually even go as far as improving your connection to the server. Now, I know a lot of you guys did not end up getting into the closed beta. I mean, come on, be real here. They went ahead and they sent out 50,000 closed beta keys to what was probably well over 10 million applicants. But hey, don't let that take away from how excited you are for the game. The protocol looks amazing and both Mrs. Dix and I are going to remain equally as excited for it whether we get into the closed beta or not. I mean, you know, like I, I would love to get in the closed beta but otherwise we just have to wait our turn but this is my opinion my impressions of blue protocol right now what do you guys think though let me know down in the comments below and let's talk about it anyway guys that is it for me thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and i'll see you all next time Peace.